this video I want to talk about audio racks. I mean, all your audio gear needs to be placed somewhere. And in my world, every part of an audio file system plays a role in the overall end result. A good sounding system. So for me, even a stereo rack is part of the chain. In the good old days, we had these kind of racks. With glass doors and you just placed all the equipment on top of each other. This gave heat problems, so after that it got a little bit better with racks that allowed you to place every piece on its own shelf. Still very thin shelves and still closed up equipment racks, but it, it was a little bit better. Now my first serious DIY attempt looked a little bit like this. And at one point I also used these exact stone blocks. After that people got into glass racks. They were a little bit more living room friendly, but when those glass shelves are too thin, it could result in bad audio. So of course I also had my glass period, but I bought a set of heavy glass shelves to add to the rack. Then after a period wooden racks came back. Back into fashion, into fashion with the big difference that it had to be real wood and heavy, heavy shelves. So I did something like this next. Now official racks from audiophile companies come with a very hefty price tag. Something I could not afford. But I was also done a little bit with all the DIY looks. So what to do? Well, I decided to design my own rack and have it made by a carpenter. So yes, why would you even bother? Well, the idea is that music is vibration. And in the end, as an audiophile, I only want to hear the vibration, meaning the music, that is on my CD, or whatever your source is. And what I don't want is extra added vibrations from my system to the signal. Because a lot of electronics is susceptible of vibrations, and if they do come through, there is a possibility that this vibration becomes part of your sound signal. And that's not what you want. You may have experienced that when you tap on your headphone cable, you can clearly hear this on your phones. This is the same thing. The vibrations from your tapping has been added to the sound signal. So when you play music, these vibrations will excite everything that is in the room. Like when you feel your couch vibrating when playing loud bass. This means that your equipment is also vibrating and that is why some of the higher end equipment is built like a tank. But also your equipment rack is vibrating and that is why I think it's worth paying attention to. Now let me tell you a little anecdote. This whole notion of a rack having an effect on music came up somewhere in the 70s when Ivor Tiefenbrunn, don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but Ivor Tiefenbrunn of Lynn, he introduced his famous LP12 and he claimed that this expensive table sounded best on a cheap IKEA lock table. Everywhere he demonstrated his new, turn his new turntable, he would take this little IKEA table and many people got convinced. Now another story is that one of an audiophile somewhere also in the 70s who also got convinced that vibrations had an effect on turntables and he thought it was best to make sure that you have a rack that has zero vibrations. Sounds logical, I mean no vibrations, no problems. So what he did was he hacked a hole in the ground of his listening room and he built a concrete column that went from the floor below through the hole into his listening room so he could place his turntable on that column. The end result? Well, the end result was terrible. It appeared that the vibrations from the turntable itself now had nowhere to go. They were trapped inside the turntable and distorted the sound. So maybe the IKEA table helped these vibrations to dissipate and clean up the sound. Anyways, there is no golden rule. Different turntable designs have different requirements. The only constant is that external vibrations can have an effect on the quality of the sound. And it's all about the vibrations in this hobby. So that is why I like to experiment with different setups. So now let's go back to my own design. 
And this is the rack that I made. Well, the design is mine and I had it built for me by a carpenter. So let's start with some dimensions. The total height of the rack is 94 centimeters. The total width is 112 centimeters. I wanted two pieces of equipment to be able to stand next to each other, but not too close. The bottom level is 30 centimeters high, and at the time that I made this design, I made this a little bit higher because I wanted my two power amps to go there. I did that for a while, but later I made another rack for my tube amps. The other two levels are 20 centimeters high. That is more than you would need for most equipment, but this is done for heat dissipation and I, and I wanted to have some extra height in case of the amount of equipment would grow and I could maybe stack them on top of each other. Now the rack is 55 centimeters deep and also this is probably more than you should need. But I wanted the equipment on top, like the turntable, to have more than enough space around it. This was mostly done for appearances. I like it like that. It feels robust, it feels serious. I don't know how to describe it in a different way, but it makes me feel good. However, the two middle levels are shorter. They are 40 centimeters deep. And this is done so I could have shorter cables between the different components. And it meant that not all cables would be sticking out from the back of the rack. It made it look more tidy and it made it easier to change cables when the rack was placed close to the wall. Because don't forget, this rack is made of real maple and MDF and it weighs in at around some 120 kilos, which is some 265 pounds. Seriously, you cannot lift this rack from the ground by yourself. And here we have the rear of the rack. I was not completely satisfied with how the carpenter finished the rear, but, well, it is the rear. You can see the sandwich construction from Maple, MDF and Maple. And the reason I chose this kind of construction was, well, two considerations. One, everything goes back to vibrations in this hobby. And at the time there was this idea that if you made your rack from just one kind of material, the whole rack would have the same resonance frequency and that could be an issue. But by combining different materials you could counteract that. And of course, if you can measure that, that would be great. But I did not have the, the equipment to make measurements to find out what would work best, so I had to make a guess. It was an educated guess because most racks, as well as many instruments, but most racks at the time were made from maple. So I knew that it would be a, kind of a safe guess. And it looks beautiful, although that is subjective, of course. And the other reason was cost. A complete maple rack in this size was more expensive than I could afford. So we used MDF for the middle layer. I did not want to go with only two layers, because I wanted the look of those thick sides on this rack. I mean, I have to look at it for a very long time. I also added some of these tubes that can help me with cable management. Mostly to keep power cables and interconnects as far away as possible from each other. And it is nice to have some way to assist you with that. I will address cable management in another video, but especially when you design your own rack, it is worth giving that some consideration. So this is where the rack eventually will come. But when I had everything installed the first time, there was a problem. When I played a record and I was in the kitchen, which is just on the other side of the room, any little jump or just heavy walking made the record skip. So it turned out that my floor was actually too bouncy. This has to do with the way this house is built. And you can check my other video if you want to know what that is all about. But this was obviously a problem. So what was the solution? Well, it turned out the solution was actually very simple. With the rack on the floor, it followed the movements of the floor. So I had to stop the bounce from the floor from reaching the rack. So I was off to the toy store to find me some bouncy balls. And by putting these balls between the floor and the rack, they absorb the bounce from the floor before it reaches the rack. I now have a bouncy rack, but skipping rackets do not occur anymore, no matter how hard you jump. And 
here is the end result, an incredibly heavy wreck in my own design with all my current equipment in it. There is enough room on all sides so I can reach around when I want to change or check something. I think it looks beautiful and that is what matters because it stands in my listening room. It has enough room in it for all my equipment and it acts as a solid base to place my equipment on without worries about any vibrations from the rack or the floor interfering with my music signal. Check my quick tour video if you want to learn more about all the equipment that you see in the rack over here. And I hope I gave you some ideas or maybe even some inspiration to reevaluate the way you place your equipment. Please consider giving this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe so you will be signaled when I put out a new video. And for now, happy listening.